What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to draw mountains. Now mountains are somewhat shaped like triangles and because of that we're going to make these mountains out of triangular pyramids. Now the reason I say triangular pyramids is because when you're looking at reference images of a mountain, let's say it's light source, let's assume it'll be the sun. So the sun is shining upon the mountains wherever it is in the sky and one side will be lit up and the other side will have deep dark shades. So with whatever reference images of mountains you find on the internet, you can see that a mountain will be split in half between lights and darks. So when we get to the coloring portion of this video, I'll be able to give you guys a visual representation of what I'm talking about. But for now, let's get started. So I'm going to take my color erase pencil and I'm just going to draw like a... Just like a, a triangle shape, sort of like a, a dune like a dune shape but still a triangle and a triangle usually has three sides so I'm just gonna draw the two pointy ends but then the bottom one I'm gonna leave blank because I want to draw several different mountains that are kind of surrounding it so let's draw another one behind it yes the yeah, so we're, um, when we're starting to draw mountains, we're going to draw some triangle shapes, but um, they're going to be kind of distorted because usually a triangle is has straight edges like this. The triangles that I'm drawing have curved edges like this. Actually, let me make this one a little bit bigger. And then I could probably put one over here. Yeah. And then just fill that in. Okay, so there's our initial shapes for our mountains. You can choose to make the peaks of the mountain. You can choose to make those sharp, but obviously they don't have to be. Okay, so now we're gonna split each of these triangles in half, but we're not gonna do it directly down the middle like we would a regular triangle. So when we split mountains in half, well, first of all, mountains are not man-made. So instead of a mountain being an exact triangle like it would be, it's actually formed by rock, formed by the earth or whatever. So it's not gonna be a specific shape as if we humans created mountains. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna give it sort of like a jagged edge, kind of like this. So what I'm doing to get these jagged edges is I'm putting my pencil to the paper and then I'm moving it around, like twisting it, something like this with my fingers. So that's what I'm doing down here. Because you don't need to, you don't need to necessarily get this perfect, but just make sure that these lines are not super straight. So let's do that with the other mountains too, and I'll walk you through it too. So just twist. You can even go in a zigzag pattern while you're twisting it. So go up and down up and down like so go in your little zigzag pattern like that Okay, and on this mountain, we're not going to see it, so we can leave that alone. Unless you want a small portion over here to be seen, that's totally up to you. Okay, so now that we got the lines that help split the light and the dark side of the mountain in half, we're actually going to go off of this line and match the contours of each mountain. So you see this line for the edge? We're going to kind of mimic that shape coming off of this line that splits it in half like this so kind of so with my mountain it goes out 
then back in and then goes away it disappears behind this mountain so I'm not gonna apply that with every single edge of this line I'm actually gonna provide a few lines here and there like so and we're gonna do that with all the other mountains too okay and then actually let me fix this tip real quick cuz I think I want to fix that give it like a soft tip Okay, and then this edge of the mountain, since we can't define the halfway point, we do know that this side would have these lines. And then let's do it with the foreground mountain too. Okay, so we pretty much got our mountains drawn already. You can leave it like this if you want. The sketch is already done. But what I am going to do is I'm going to ink this in time lapse and then come back to you guys and show you guys how to add some color. Okay, so the inking portion is done and now we're ready to color. So I'm going to use markers today. And I'm using a combination of Copic markers and the Ahuhu markers. The colors I'm using are a colorless blender. I'm using the Ahuhu brand. The Copic brand could also work, but in my case, that one's out of ink. So I'm using the Ahuhu brand colorless blender. Um, I'm using BV02, BV34, BV04, and then an Ahuhu marker. This is a P5 Aubergine, Aubergine, that, and then C5. So those are what I'm going to be using to color these mountains. I'm going to do it with one of the mountains and then time lapse the rest of the drawing to save time. Alright, so I'm going to grab my BV02. And then what I'm going to do is um, just flick up like this. I'm going to apply lots of layers down here because down here close to where the bottom of the mountain is, that's where most of the shades are going to go. But this is just the base color. So we're going to add the shades later, but for now we're just going to um, take this marker ink close to the top. But the top of this mountain, that will be a white. So that's why I have my colorless blender. So we're not going to go all the way to the top with this marker, but close enough to the top so we can apply the colorless blender. So we're actually going to go all the way around the mountain too. See how we're getting that effect already. Okay. And now we can use our colorless blender and try to blend those strokes out. Okay, so I think I got a good enough blend to the white. Now we can begin adding our shades. So let's go to our BV34 and add a slightly darker color. I think this will take more effect when we add the darker shades because this is an in-between color. So let's use our BV04. Yeah, see, that has a darker value, so we can use this. Okay, and now we can add our darkest color, which is P5, a Huhu brand. And we can just apply this close to the bottom of the mountain. 
we can apply it in a big large area so that we have room to blend it so I'd say about here is a good spot and then right here Alright, and now we can work backwards. So let's use our BV04 and blend this color out. Okay, and now let's use our BV34. Hopefully it'll work this time. Okay, now we can use our last color, which is BV02. And we gave ourselves room to blend this without exactly going into the white. So that's a good thing. Let's try to mix that in as well as we can. Okay, and then if you have to, you can go back to your colorless blender and blend the white. So now we're at this point of coloring the mountain. We're not exactly done yet because now we can really determine where our light source is. So the reason I colored this and then said light source is because I know for a fact that the shades are close to the bottom of the mountain, which is down here. Now, like I said from the beginning, the presumed light source, which would be the sun, will be shining on one end of the mountain. One side will be dark, the other would be light. So now we can determine where exactly the sun is shining. Will it be on this side and shining upon this part of the mountain? Or will it be on this side and shining on this part of the mountain? That you can determine right now. In my case, I'm going to have the sun over here in this corner shining upon this part of the mountain. So we'll be applying our shades to this portion, this side that doesn't have all this texture. So I'm gonna use my C5 and give it a dark value. And then just make everything dark. So I'm gonna uh, take this C5 and blend it with this um, with this purple down here and then we can use our BV34 helps blend with the gray so why not then we can use BV04 Blend this back in. And then let's use our darkest color, which is P5. And kind of extend this shading a little bit higher on the mountain. And then we're going to take our BV04 and try to blend that in with the other colors. Now we got BV34 and I think this would be it in terms of the color. Alright, and now you can kind of see that that mountain looks very realistic. So normally I don't really go for the realistic look, but that's good enough to me. But what I am going to do now in terms of highlights, I'm going to use my white colored pencil. You probably see this in all my videos, but I'm going to apply that to the textured lines, especially down here where it's dark, so that way it'll be, it'll be seen. like because the Prismacolor colored pencils act like paint 
so that's why in the dark areas this is really where it would show up. And then the white parts, white on top of white really won't be seen, but you get the gist of it. That's really how you do it. Okay, so now I'm going to apply this concept to the rest of the drawing so you can see everything with all the colors. So here's the finished drawing. I hope you guys like how it turned out because I personally love it myself. But I did leave the sky out. But if you do want to learn how to color the sky, I got two videos on how to draw the sky. One video is public here on YouTube. I'll put a link right here and in the outro. And the other is exclusive over on my Patreon. So there will be a link in the description to get there. But with that being said, that's about it. That's how you draw mountains. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I'm that money like that cake.